together here. Uh, others will be watching later on, so hello to them as well. Uh, we give thanks to the Lord as we come together. Uh, we usually open up with a praise song. Uh, this is one that we will be singing next week in, uh, during our worship service. Uh, but th this week it's especially important because we haven't sung this but once or twice uh, back last summer, Shout to the North and the South. Uh, and you'll find it in the, um, uh, in, in the insert. Uh, but uh, if, if, if you can't read it, if it's too small, uh, the chorus is, shout to the north and the south, sing to the east and the west, Jesus is Savior to all, Lord of heaven and earth. And so if you can't read it, just sing the chorus with us. Uh, it, it happens several times. Gracious God, we come before you on this second Sunday of Easter. As we gather in your presence today, we are grateful for the gift of resurrection and a new life that we now embrace. Bless this time of worship. Guide us by your Holy Spirit so that our hearts be open 
to receive your word, our minds be filled with your wisdom, and our actions reflect your love in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Please stand as you're able and join me in the call for worship. The Lord is risen. Christ is risen indeed. As we share love with those we love, let us give our best. As we reach out to all with the love of Christ, let our care for others echo the compassion of the heart of God. Our opening hymn this morning is Crown Him with Many Crowns, number 327 in the hymnal. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we have uh, some announcements for the week. Uh, this week we have the preschool family night out uh, at Handel's Ice Cream, the one that's uh, uh, there on uh, Mountain, is it Mountain Night Mountain, mm -hmm. uh, uh, not the one in uh, in, in Rancho. Uh, and so this is a good excuse for going out for ice cream because it uh, helps the preschool get some more money. So, uh, uh, so, so be sure that uh, you go out uh, on Thursday for ice cream. Uh, it isn't very often you hear that from the pulpit. Uh, this Saturday we have our memorial service for Hal Haynes, uh, and uh, it's 11 o'clock here in the sanctuary uh, with a reception to follow in the uh, fellowship hall. Uh, and uh, the family says, uh, be sure you don't wear black. This is a celebration of his life. This isn't. Uh, a time of sadness. 
Uh, and then there will be a memorial service for uh, Evelyn Campbell the next week. Uh, so unfortunately, um, we uh, continue. Um, and then also, the alternative gift fair, instead of having just one big one after church, uh, the outreach committee has decided to split it up into, into four different ones and give that a try for a couple of years. Do you want to say something about it, Renee? Chair of Outreach. <laughs> You've explained it very well. Uh, this coming Sunday, it's going to we're going to um, feature Encore and give some information about that and um, ask for a special donation. Um, however small, every dollar helps. And we'll send that off to UMCOR. Um, there's been a lot of um, natural disasters in recent weeks and uh, anything we can do to support their work, that's what we're here for. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, we originally planned on having this be the one for Heifer Project. Uh, and uh, we decided to move that, I think, to August or the summer sometime, uh, because uh, there has just been so many natural disasters that MCOR has asked that churches all give so that uh, we can um, buy the supplies it takes to help people put their lives back together. We? Yeah, you want to say something? Yeah. Okay. One is, um, often the things that the Methodist Church does, oh, by the way, I'm Teresa Ellis, um, for those of you who don't know me, um, the, the Methodist Church does a lot of things that we don't see, but <laughs> sorry, um, my sister's house was ruined um, in the tornadoes in Mississippi recently. Um, and she was so shocked to see the number of um, church organizations come to help, and one of them was UMCOR. This microphone keeps going in and out. I'm not sure what's happening. Who knows? Um, anyway, uh, UMCOR was one of them, Samaritan's Purse, a couple of other organizations came and really took care of her and my brother-in-law, um, which was just such a blessing. So please give generously. UMCOR is one of the only organizations like this that has almost zero overhead. All of the money that you give goes directly to, almost all of the money you give goes directly to uh, the work that they do. So um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is we had our visioning retreat a couple of weeks ago and we decided that people were really wanting to jump in and do a couple of jobs around the church and we decided to open it up to everybody that because i know some of you couldn't make it to the retreat and so out in front we're having coffee fellowship out there today and there's a card table with some sign up so read the description of different things and put your name down and please you know please be willing to to do do something um, you know, many hands make light work, so thank you. Good, thank you. Yeah, and another thing uh, that is happening is that uh, there's been a group gathering looking at, at one of the, some of the things that we might do uh, to help our church, uh, and uh, they are uh, put together a survey, uh, and uh, so uh, after worship, uh, we are going to be uh, looking at the, that survey uh, administrative council, uh, trying to help uh, administrative council, uh, church council get on board uh, and uh, make this a whole church project. Uh, and so uh, after worship, um, they, they will we'll have a special church council meeting. Uh, so particularly if you're on church council, but anybody else uh, as well, please stay afterwards so we can uh, run over that quickly before we, uh, before we run out of uh, coffee fellowship. Of course, the, the people who get out first will get their choice of donuts. So uh, yeah, but there's some sacrifices that have to be made. So uh, after, after worship, uh, we'll have a, a quick little special meeting uh, for church council to uh, share uh, this, uh, um, this project. Here, here in the sanctuary. Here in the sanctuary, yeah. Um, and let's see, we do have outreach meeting this week uh, on Tuesday. Is that right, Renee? At 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. 
Tuesday in room 14. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, uh, prayers and squares, of course, at the Dugan home this week. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, going out for ice cream. Are there other announcements that need to be made? We have uh, joys and concerns. Uh, we uh, had a wonderful ben. service for Linda. Ben. Um, yeah. Welcome to visitors. To visitors today. Oh, we do. Okay. I am I'm told that we have some visitors out there. And um, oh, oh, yeah, Barbara's Barbara's visitor. Yeah. <laughs> Here, let me uh, let me pass the. Um, uh, the, that, that's a joy, is that uh, uh, Barbara had her birthday party yesterday. She's somewhere between 29 and, and 39. She wouldn't tell me. <laughs> Here, pass, uh, pass this microphone to Barbara. This is my best friend, Lori, my sister, my actual virtual sister. But um, we've known each other since we were in elementary school when we both moved to Maryland at the same time. and she flew out here to surprise me for my birthday. <laughs> I know, I, I am just so blessed on all the friends that came from all my different walks of life that I did, and to have people here that came from so far, it was truly amazing. And I, so, I was 11, and she was nine. <laughs> yep, 1964, so it's been a while now. Doing your addition. <laughs> To have you here. Yes, yes, we're saying where you can join. That was a joy. Kim? Stephen, I forgot to mention last week that our baby girl turned 26 last Friday. Oh. Which, how did that happen, right? <laughs> and the same week she passed her state exam. So she's now going to be working, looking for employment. So prayers, 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 please. This is going to be a peer counselor. So please. <laughs> I'm underlining that. Sit for right. our appointment. <laughs> and also, we're going to be getting the little ones to stay with us again for another two and a half weeks. They should be arriving next Sunday evening, so safe travels for them, please. Okay. Thank you, Ken. Other joys and concerns? Ben? Yeah, go ahead. I have a concern for my sister. Uh, she's my baby sister, Candy Stump. She grew up in the church, she got married here. Um, she is uh, losing her eyesight, and she also has a lung disease that she's going to have to, have to postpone um, treatment for, which is three antibiotics for almost two years, which is going to be changing her whole lifestyle, but she has to wait for that because she has to have a tubal eye plant uh, to try to say what vision she has, but it's not looking hopeful. Again, her name is Candy Stump. All right, thank you. Um, I'm looking at uh, some of these things. Uh, something that uh, we probably should lift uh, is Rose, our, um, our treasurer, uh, had to have some additional uh, knee surgery. Uh, so she is recovering. Uh, she will be moving around on crutches. Uh, which is particularly tricky when you have an office that goes upstairs. I have some experience with this. So uh, we lift up, we lift Rose in our prayers as well. Ben? Yeah. Our head usher is going to be having his, um, let me figure, 40th birthday soon? Oh. Oh. Yes, our head usher is Jason, and believe it or not, he's turning 40. He's no longer a young adult cat. <laughs> yeah. This is the first year in uh, an annual conference I've had to check senior. It says 65 and over, so this is my first year of being a senior at annual conference. Yeah. Okay, congratulations, J Jason. Uh, welcome to the club. <laughs> All right, let's just take, oh, 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 stand, hold on just a minute. You will notice on the prayer request list in your bulletin, a name which only a couple of people here would recognize, those who were on the work team to Angol, Juan Carlos de Ritamal, and Juan passed away 
maybe over a week ago, and I saw a word from a member of that church, and a friend, personal friend of ours for 50, 60 years, a wonderful guy, and his family will be in our prayers as uh, they feel his loss. And by the way, uh, it's very good to recycle paper, but not until they've been used. Often I see the, the repair this in the recycle box out of the, in the exit, and they're really meant to be taken home and hopefully used. And if people who are on this list are you know, people who need our prayers, so let's, uh, let's see if we can do our part and, and pray for those who, who need your, our support. Thank you, Stan, for both the reminder and the scolding. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Just take a moment and greet the people around you with words of peace.
let the children come. I said, let the children come. Then we'll be as one. Let the children come. I had a brace over this one. I'm like, hey, she's your night kid. She loves when I kind of kick on it. She disappeared on me. She was in the back for a minute. I'm like, where'd you go? It's fun when I have Gracie, because I give her the option. If she's only here, and I'm like, okay, stay with Grandma, you can hang out with me. The glint in her eye. Sorry, Kim. She wants to hang out with me. You get her all day. It's fine. You get her all day. All right, so do you have to see something to believe it? So if somebody told you that a, a, a food item yeah, I know you're picking up, I'm talking the wrong thing. So if you, somebody told you a food item was like phenomenal, that you had to try it, would you believe in that it was phenomenal? That it was really good? It's their opinion. <laughs> it's their opinion, right? It's their opinion sometimes. What about if you, um, somebody tells you they saw this really fun movie that it was just the best movie ever, and that you have to go see it, and it's just phenomenal? Do you believe him? No. <laughs> You're so not trusting. Gracie's a skeptic. She is very much a skeptic. So here's the So when the disciples saw Jesus after the resurrection, they initially were like a little shocked. And but they saw the holes in his hands and the hole in his side. So that they believed that it was Jesus. Um, but Thomas wasn't there. And he's like, I don't believe you. He wasn't here. I have to see the holes in his hands and the hole in his side. So a couple days later, afterwards, Thomas was like, yeah, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And Jesus appeared to him. And he's, Jesus said, there's my hand. You can see the holes. You can see the hole in my side. Then he believed him. And Jesus' point was, do you need to see it to believe it? Do we need to be able to see Jesus' love? To believe it? Do you need do you need to do you need to see you? To believe No, right? So that's the point. You need to be able to believe, even though you're not gonna see it. Because I mean, do you believe? Can you see your grandmother's love? Right? Yeah. To an extent, right? But visually it's you don't see their her heart beating, right? So that was the point. So they needed, he needed to believe, and they call him Doubting Thomas, because um, he didn't doubt. Doubted, you know, that Jesus was real and that he did come back to us. So we gotta believe sometimes, even if we don't see it, right? All right, you ready? Dear Lord, thank you for this child and all the children of the world. Thank you for their honesty and their loving and their silliness and all the fun that they bring to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love the soul, let them come so they can be. A love that won't let go. Bring it If you would stand for the um, song of praise, excuse me, the prayer song. Or you can remain seated if you'd like. <laughs> Number 328. Surely the presence. continue in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks. We thank you, Lord, for all the many blessings that we have received. 
We thank you, Lord, for the beauty of this place. We thank you for the rain that is falling. Lord, we give you thanks for, uh, for your majesty, for uh, the mountains that are slowly turning from white back to brown as this year goes on. We thank you, Lord, for family and friends. We thank you for the faces here in this church uh, and those who will be watching later. Lord, we give you thanks. We thank you for this community of believers. Lord, help us to reach out and to share the faith that we know, the love that we have found. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. For Lord, we know that there is so much pain and suffering in the world. And Lord, we pray that you would surround those who are facing great trials. Lord, we lift up the people of uh, Ukraine and other places around the world where warfare and uh, suffering is going on. Lord, we lift up our own uh, families in this country who have lost homes and lives uh, with, uh, with storms and, and floods and tornadoes. Lord, we lift up members of our own church who stand in special need uh, of your care and your strength. We lift up the Dugans, Lord. Uh, and uh, pray for, for Sarah and pray for those uh, who are traveling. Uh, Lord, we lift up Candy Stump and pray for her healing and, uh, and Rose. Uh, Lord, we lift up uh, the family of uh, Juan in his passing and, uh, and all those, uh, Evelyn and, uh, and Linda uh, and Hal's passing. Uh, it has been uh, nine months, but Lord, uh, we know that you have surrounded the Haynes family, and we pray that that would continue this week uh, as we share together in his memory. Lord, there are others that we have not named, but that we hold in our hearts. And Lord, we name those in silence before you. And Lord, we thank you for the great joys that we have been given. Uh, with uh, with uh, Barbara and Jason, we thank you for birthdays, uh, for uh, those who are traveling from a distance. Lord, we uh, thank you for for their coming and pray for their safe arrival. Uh, Lord, we uh, have so many joys in our lives. Uh, we are so very privileged, and we give you thanks. We thank you, Lord. And we pray that you would open our eyes to see you more clearly, that we would allow you to come into our lives in the power of the Holy Spirit, that we might truly share you and your peace. In the name of our precious Savior, we pray the prayer uh, he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We continue our worship as we dedicate our tithes and offerings to God.
Thank you, Adri. If you are able, uh, please rise for our doxology. Gracious God, you have blessed us. We know that everything in this world is a gift from you. We humbly return a generous portion of this gift to you. We pray that this gift may help our work and church to spread your love and change the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. As we continue this worship, our cathedral choir lead us into the world in song.
This morning's scripture reading, the first one, is from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. 3 through 9, excuse me. I'm on the wrong page. Give me a minute. Mm -hmm. You're on 2 Peter. Yeah. <laughs> The letters of Peter are short. Anyway, here we go. The first letter of Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power was guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, which though perishable is tested by fire, may redound to praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Without having seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with unutterable and exalted joy. And as the outcome of your faith, you obtain the salvation of your souls. The second reading is from John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 30. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the marks of the nails and place my finger in the marks of the nails and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and put your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithful, but faithless, but believe him. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and understanding of this word. A principle of a small town middle school had a problem with a few of the older girls who had started using lipstick. When applying it in the bathroom, they would then press their lips to the mirror to leave lip prints, and so slowly the mirror would cover with, uh, with prints. Before it got completely out of hand, he thought of a way to stop it. He called on all the girls uh, who were of that age to gather together uh, and uh, told them he wanted to meet them uh, in the ladies' room at 2 p.m. when school let out. 
They gathered at that hour and found the principal and the school custodian waiting for them. The principal explained that it was beginning to be a problem for the custodian to clean the mirror every night. And he said he felt the ladies did not fully understand just how much of a problem it was, and he wanted them to witness how it was cleaned. So then he pointed to the custodian, who then demonstrated he took a long uh, brush on a handle, a toilet brush, put it in the toilet, swished it around, and cleaned the mirror with it. That was the last day the girls pressed their lips up to the mirror. It has been said by a number of biblical scholars that the Bible does not give us heroes after whom we should model our lives, but instead mirrors in which we can see ourselves. Let us be in prayer. Gracious God, we lay our lives before you, trusting in you, knowing that too often uh, we are like the disciples in Thomas, but trusting in your mercy and your grace. In the name of our Savior, amen. The disciples have been hiding in the upper room for three days. Mary has come running to tell them that Jesus is risen, but they do not believe her. Then Jesus comes walking through the door and walking right through the door. It's locked. Here is Jesus. The disciples are screaming like scared children. He says, it is I, and shows them his hands inside. And then they are joyful. Our story says, he breathed on them. And this word is used only here in the New Testament, uh, and it echoes the a couple of times it's used in the Old Testament, the creation, the breath of God, bringing about life, the breathing over the, the bones in uh, the Valley of Dry Bones that Hannah preached on, uh, on Lent, Lent 5, uh, breathing on the bones and they come and they come back to life. The breath of life, it is incredible. Uh, by the time Daniel was born, the father got to stay with the baby. And when Rebecca was born, I was shooed off. But when Daniel was born, I got to stay with, I got to stay with him. Uh, he, uh, oh, he didn't have to be slapped on the behind because he came out crying. <laughs> And uh, uh, he was crying until he was in my arms, and then he went very quiet. That first cry, that first breath, it is an amazing, an amazing miracle. My dad uh, had an experience of breath as well. Uh, he took classes in CPR uh, and mouth-to-mouth uh, -mouth resuscitation to be able to sign off Explorer Scouts. Back then they got people to go take special classes and then the Explorer Scouts would get a certificate for having learned, and so, and so uh, uh, he, we had a recessi Annie in our house for a while. Uh, and uh, uh, so the, the Boy Scouts, the Explorer Scouts, uh, could, could practice and learn mountain to mount resuscitation and, uh, uh, and CPR. Uh, and it just happened that uh, at a big minister's meeting, I wasn't there, uh, it was when I was still in college, I think, uh, my, uh, my dad was there and saw one of his uh, good, good friends in the ministry have a heart attack there, right there in the, um, in, in the room. Uh, and so he, he ran up to him. Of course, he was doing recordings in the back. That was his style. Ran up to him, pulled him out into the center aisle, and started to, to do CPR and mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Uh, his name was Ed. I don't remember his last name. But uh, Dad worked for quite a while, and then finally there was that big breath as Ed came back to life. Let me tell you, every time I saw him with my dad, he thanked my dad. <laughs> there wasn't a meeting that went by that there wasn't that thanks. The breath of life. Jesus' breath 
was like both these gifts, one of new life and the gift of grace received that could wash away all pain and fear. All was perfect, except, except one of the disciples was missing. Thomas, we don't know what he was doing. Maybe taking care of rounding up food for the group. Maybe he was watching over Jesus' mother Mary. All we know is that Jesus was there and gone before he came back. And how did the other ten, now remember Judas is gone, how did the other ten disciples break the news to him? Were they quiet and subdued, sympathetic for him? Were they sassy? Jesus showed up and you missed him. I think they were so excited that they had to shout the good news, but it didn't feel like anything good to Thomas. I don't believe it, and I won't believe it until I see the nail prints in his hands and put my hand in his side. Uh, preaching workshops, we uh, uh, um, have those, and uh, they used to be yearly. I suppose they might go back to that now. Uh, there's a Dr. Keith Miller, a preaching teacher from a seminary in the Midwest, uh, and he told the story about a hospital that was uh, training many different interns. One doctor was supervising all of the interns, and one of them wanted to take on all the hardest patients, so he jumped at a baffling case of a man in a coma with high blood pressure and electrolytes out of balance. He did everything that could be done for that man, but the patient died never coming out of his coma. The supervisor happened to be walking by when he saw this young doctor angrily pacing back and forth at the foot of the bed. Finally, the young doctor pulled out the chart, furiously wrote on the bottom of it, and then stomped off right by the supervisor. He walked in and read what was written at the bottom. It was scribbled, this man was in better shape when he died than when he came to me. <laughs> Did Thomas read like that? Jesus returned from the dead but came when I was not here. In other New Testament places, we see him. And there he is always courageous, ready for action, anxious to continue with the ministry. Now his faith is broken. We call Thomas a doubter. And most of our translations still use that word. The Greek does not cast shadows on its character. What the Greek says is, have faith, not unfaith. Jesus waits a full week from he retur before he returns. Why? I do not think he was being mean to Thomas. I think Jesus was hoping the other ten disciples would be able to share their faith in the resurrection with one who did not see. Of course, that becomes the issue for the second generation. We don't know when Peter was written. We don't know if it was rewritten. But he says, he writes to a church that did not see. You did not see, and yet you believe. And I think maybe Jesus was hoping that this would be the story for Thomas and the other disciples. Thomas was not a doubting failure. He only came to a logical conclusion. His friends were confused in seeing things all wrong. I say he was not a doubting failure. It was the others who could not share good news of their newfound faith. After all, they hadn't been able to believe in Jesus until he showed them his hands and his side. They were the ones who doubted Mary when she came, saying that Jesus had been resurrected from the dead. It was the others who could not share the good news of their newfound faith. We know with them that it's hard to share our faith with those who do not already believe. And then Jesus walked through the door again, looked at Thomas, 
And Jesus says, see the nail prints on my hand. Put your hand in my side. Have faith, not unfaith. Thomas falls to his knees and says simply, my Lord and my God. It's the first time it is said. But it completes the words that the Gospel of John starts out with. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This is the completion that frames the Gospel of John. Only now is that statement finally known and completed. Uh, when Borg was talking about the reality of visions, uh, he mentioned this vision. Uh, Borg is a, a, a scholar and a, a writer of uh, New Testament material. Uh, he said, some people have visions of Elvis, but they do not see him at the right hand of God. <laughs> they might call him the king, but they do not say, my Lord and my God, to Elvis. We are a country that longs for heroes. There is only one true hero, and his name is Jesus the Christ. The disciples in our Bible stories are not heroes, but they are also not comedic characters. They are mirrors in which we can see our own struggles and hear the good news that God's love never fails. Jesus never gave up on Thomas. And the stories from the early church say that after the fall of Jerusalem, he went on to India. When uh, the first missionaries from the Western church came several centuries later, they found the faith had preceded them. There were Christians already there who called themselves Tomasts. So we can look in this biblical mirror and see our foolishness. But we can also see the greatness of our God and the love that God has for us. Then maybe we can start to see ourselves through God's eyes. For God loves us even when we stumble, like our otherwise courageous Thomas. No capes. We do not have to fly, but we do have to keep walking so that we can do all that we can for our Lord. And I'd like to close with the story. Uh, comes from uh, Teresa's life before I knew her. Uh, she had a uh, little baby Brianna. Uh, that was one of the great joys of marrying her is that I got a uh, two and then three year old into my life named Brianna. And uh, she was uh, uh, out uh, at a department store and was uh, trying on dresses looking, lost track of little two-year-old Brianna, or probably one and a half. And uh, she uh, suddenly realized her baby wasn't there uh, and started to call out to the store uh, owners to help her look because she looked and looked and couldn't find her. Brianna had a way of going underneath the dresses, and so she thought, oh, she's just... Uh, well, she looked under the dresses and there was no Brianna. And, uh, and so she started to panic, and they all were searching everywhere trying to find little baby Brianna. And then they were all silent for a moment and they heard a little voice. The little voice was looking into a mirror saying, what a pretty baby, such a pretty baby. She had crawled under a stall and was looking in the mirror, giving the words that were used about her over and over again, looking at herself in the mirror. What a pretty baby. We are all beautiful. We are beautiful in the eyes of God. We need to look away from other people's judgments. We need to look away from our own judgment of ourselves and instead see the eyes of God who looks upon us with love. Behold what love our God has for us. Amen. Our closing hymn, Now the Green Blade Rises, number 311, 311. Let's stand as we sing.
uh, before we have the benediction, I think uh, we need to rehearse the benediction song. Uh, this is now Easter, uh, and so we, uh, we make some changes, and one of them is a, a different benediction song. It's uh, page number 666. Please don't let that freak you out too much. <laughs> there are some hymnals that don't have uh, page number 666 in them. So maybe they thought a song about peace, shalom to you, would be a good one uh, for, uh, for this number. Uh, but uh, let's uh, go over it once, and then I'll give the benediction, and then we'll sing it again. Uh, so uh, that way we'll learn it. So let's uh, let's give it a, a rehearsal once. Amen. 